This is Tales from the Pros, where business leaders and influencers share their stories of inspiration, struggles, and successes. And I'm your host, Michael Giorgio. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Pros on this beautiful Friday. And this is Michael Giorgio, your host and co-founder of Imagine Ovation. My guest with me here today, awesome guy. His name is Fabio Marama. I'm sure many of you have seen him all over LinkedIn and his videos and his amazing content. He's considered one of the top young up and coming business professionals in Southern Ontario, Canada. And he has also won the top 40 under 40 business achievement awards in Hamilton as one of the top business professionals in the region. Fabio is also a leading marketing consultant, brand and community builder, and LinkedIn strategist with over 5 million post views and has been mentioned in top publication like Forbes and The Spec. He also continues to help professionals and leaders create more influence on LinkedIn to grow their business and establish their personal brand and generate new leads as well. Fabio Marama, I really appreciate you being with me here today, man. Thank you very much. Awesome, uh, Michael. It's been a... It's been awesome to be uh, connected with you and building that relationship and then just being able to, to have a good discussion with you today. It's uh, it's exciting. I'm excited. Let's do this. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, what's really cool is, you know, when you back and forth messages on LinkedIn or all these social media and then you finally talk, <laughs> sometimes it, I've, I've tried to reach people even through months and you finally chat. You're like, this is pretty cool. We actually are, it, it, you know, actually connecting here in real time. You know, it's, it's just a very different, uh, it's kind of like a very different emotion. Yeah. Absolutely. But so kind of Fabio, just to kick things off a little bit, you know, what really caught my attention other than your awesome, authentic videos that we'll, you know, we'll talk about in a little bit, but what caught my attention was before, you know, interviewing you on Tales from the Pros, I saw you interviewed Jay Shetty, who is absolutely amazing. Talk to me a little bit about that experience. How did you, how did you really get his attention? What was that like? Yeah, it's funny. I actually get a lot of people that ask me that because you know, Jay's obviously is an amazing content creator um, in the world. Like he's just not one platform. He's very well known. He's amazing videos. I've been following Jay for some quite some time. And yeah, it's funny. I um, I just uh, and I like to tell people is that LinkedIn is like the backdoor entrance to meeting some amazing people that you know you otherwise might not get a chance to meet. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of content creators and there's you know influencers, people all over the world, business leaders who you know, their the Instagram thing, they're big on that. You know, Jay's, you know, he's probably pushing half a million people on Instagram. He's got like 5 million on, on, um, on Facebook. And so, yeah, so I'm like, to be able to reach him there is, is probably really challenging. So, um, so yeah, I just used LinkedIn and sent him a message. And for me, it was, it wasn't about, um, taking. So for me, it was, Hey, I was doing a, a, a LinkedIn, um, a series called the uh, called Incredible, and uh, uh, sort of a, a playoff of the Incredibles, you know, the, the superheroes that are changing the platform of LinkedIn, and um, and so I reached out to him just said, hey, I want to do an interview with you. Um, you're doing some amazing th- stuff on LinkedIn, and you know, Jay only had at the time like thirty thousand people on uh, connections on LinkedIn, so um, or thirty thousand followers. So you know, it was probably a lot less noisy, and I really use it as an opportunity to 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 interview him and and you know as we did the article you know I, I asked him if we could do a video he was down for that and um i think one of the other th- big things was i used visuals so i you know i sent him the the fully done up header image of the the article and instead of just sending him a big block of text and um i think that one of the biggest things was you got to be visual you got to be you have to be different and eye catching but at the same time you, it can't just be about you you have to you have to give or you have to provide value and you know i, I wanted to do a, a great article on him and um, I think pr- previous to that, I had done a few articles and um, and 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 shared them on some posts, and I had t- tagged him a few times, and he had engaged. So I think there was a little bit of that awareness and that discovery piece that he was more willing to when I did message him, uh, be open to to doing a video. So that was yeah, that was awesome. It was really exciting. So it's you were very creative in your messaging, and also it was probably a lot about timing, right? You you kind of got him at a really good time where it, it wasn't so well I would say it's I think it's social media is saturated in general I mean everyone's on it and LinkedIn's getting even more and more but it seems like you got him before he was more involved in LinkedIn right because now I'm seeing a lot of his posts all over LinkedIn mm-hmm. um, is that kind of how 
how it happened? Yeah. Um, it's funny because uh, he's – Jay is obviously a super busy guy, right? And I think um, he's – in the last six months, I've really noticed his – you know, his following is really growing as he really ramps up his video. And, I mean, he's been doing that since he left um, – um Huffington Post so he used to do morning I think I'm a show for Huffington Post and when he left there he decided he wanted to do his own thing so he's been really ramping up so obviously he's busy you know he's got speaking he's got all these other things so um I think it was just a good time where I think you know I, and I don't know I don't know I can't speak for what Jay's what's going on in Jay's life but um mm-hmm. obviously he's you know the bigger you get the more you can't handle yourself so he's probably got you know a team of people with him and now and so it's a little bit harder to break through the noise but I think it was just a good time. LinkedIn was just starting to break through with video and, um, you know, it's only a, under a year old. So I think, uh, I think it was just good timing. And I, ca- I caught him at the time before, uh, his, his follower volcano erupted and, uh, <laughs> and I was able to connect with them at a good time. So, um, hopefully I get the chance to talk with him again. And, uh, I mean, that'd be awesome just to see, so, you know, what, what's been going on in his life and how he's been able to grow the video side. And, um, so yeah, so I, 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 I've reached out a few times and, you know, I try to make some good connections with him and uh, definitely someone that uh, I want to, you know, continue to, to, to follow closely because, you know, he's just providing so much value and just, I can, I learned so much from him and try and apply as much as I can from what he's doing all over many platforms just to, just to LinkedIn. His content's awesome. It's just so inspirational. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, you know, when you interview these people, you're learning so much and you're improving your content. That's how I do. I try to interview people like you and just leaders and I'm continuously learning and just gaining insight and knowledge and inspiration and encouragement. And I think it's, um, it's just vital to pour out all this content, um, and and not really expect anything in return. You know what I mean? I think, and we'll jump into this a little bit, but I, I think with just messaging in general, whether it's copy or it's video, I think it really comes down to uh, the purpose behind it, you know, and and the the motive. And I, I've read, I've listened to a few of your other past podcasts you've been on, and you talk a lot about motives. And man, I'll tell you, if you listen to some of my episodes, I love talking about motives and purpose and your why behind you behind uh, what you're doing because that drives you. You know, you can't really you it's you always have to have the right motive behind what you're doing and have the right intent. Yep. Uh, and sometimes not expect anything in return because you know what, with that, with that, um, I think with just that concept of having the right motive, people are going to really engage with you and they're going to see how real and raw you are, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. And it's when you give, give, give 10 times more. And it's, it's, it's just awesome because when you give, uh, without expecting anything in return, it's funny how much does actually come back in return, you know, but it wasn't something you were chasing. It was more out of out of, you know, that person really enjoyed being, you know, know, building that relationship with you. They, you know, you you gave them some maybe good nuggets of knowledge and they're like, you know what, you know, an article comes up or like they're mentioned, you know, they're doing a Forbes article, which is funny because, you know, um, one of my, one of my buddies, Jeremy Slate, he, you just, you know, that's essentially a great example. We just connected on LinkedIn. Um, I loved his podcast. We were just, we were messaging back and forth and, he just did an article for Forbes and he, and he name dropped me uh, when he was talking about LinkedIn and in a Forbes article that, and I didn't ask for it. It was just because, you know, we had just built a good relationship. I'd give him some great tips about LinkedIn and, and then, uh, you know, he, it was just organic and, and it really showed that it doesn't matter, you know, if it's Jeremy or if it's, you know, Jay Shetty or who, anyone in the world you're building a relationship with give and serve. And it's so amazing what can come back to you just because you were authentic and genuine about it. Yeah, and, and you know what it really does, uh, Fabio, is it builds a lot of trust, I've noticed. Uh, mm-hmm. Just with launching this podcast, no, I just noticed that I'm gaining a lot of trust, and that's really what I want to do. It's, I mean, yeah, I have a company, Imagine, I have a tech company, Imagine Ovation, but it's not, even, it's, it's not even about that. It's about I want to build trust with people. I want people to know who I am and know my story, and, and I think through this podcast, it, it gives me that, op- that platform, that opportunity, and that's why I want to inter- interview people like you. It gives you that platform and it's just great collaboration. And it's just amazing how all these tools ha- can help us if you, if you use them correctly, you know? Uh, totally. Yeah. It's been great. Like I've been doing the same thing. I don't have a podcast or anything, but just, you know, hopping on LinkedIn video and instead of talking about myself, you know, focusing on someone else and, and asking them questions or doing articles like I was doing with, you know, Jay Shetty and other, you know, Manu Goswami and, and finding folks that, doing some great things and just sharing that knowledge that they have with 
you know, with the community. And uh, it's just cool how they respond. When you build other people up, uh, there's a great quote. You know, one of my buddies, Cena Fact, talks about it all the time. He says, be the tide that rises all ships. And if you can be that tide that uh, lifts other people up and serves in that sort of way, it's you kind of all raise up together as a community. So you benefit it. We all benefit um, through good content. I think that's that's really, really important, especially on a platform like LinkedIn. Absolutely. I love that quote. That's, that's, that's cool. So what inspired you, Fabio, to become to, to get into this leader role in Canada? I know you're in, in Ontario in regards to business and marketing. What, what, tell me a little bit about that story. Yeah, I just... Um, it's funny. Like I, I didn't even know if I was ever going to go into business and marketing, but uh, I uh, actually went to um, to university, and this is like about ten years ago now. I when I first started jumping in university, and um, I uh, took health sciences. <clears throat> didn't actually like love the school. Didn't love the program, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Like I didn't even have an idea. I sort of just jumped in and. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, there's healthcare as an industry that's going to grow. Maybe, you know, it's something I can get into and but didn't have a passion for it. Finished the first year and then dropped out and said, this isn't for me. And, uh, and then it worked for a year. And uh, while I was working part time um, in between, I actually ended up, it's funny how little, little stops on the road can lead to some cool things. I actually met my wife while working in that little gap year there oh, wow. before I went back to school. And then, um, so yeah, uh, and you know, just through through talking to my my now wife, you know, we were like, you know what, uh, try try uh try something again, like go back and and see what you see what you can do. So I talked to a few people, one of my best friends took business, and he's like, I loved it, and um, so I thought, you know, I'll give it a shot. I'll take business, and you know, I I, I jumped in, went back to school, and but I had a different mindset this time. I said, you know what, I don't want to just I don't just want to you know waste my time here and and um and just get a piece of paper because it's not going to help me at all. So I, I really jumped in and um, I jumped in and not just learning from business and marketing and courses because that was a small part of everything. But, you know, I jumped in, in a really cool organization on campus called Enactus and got to build some amazing projects in the community. You know, we help we help local businesses grow their business. We help, you know, write business plans and help them. We built programs for for elementary school kids and got them to to learn about business. You know, here's five, six year old, seven year olds learning about what entrepreneurship is, how to start a business. And then we also talk, you know, high school kids, financial literacy, and then we got to take all these projects and then present them on a national stage. And, you know, you're presenting in front of industry leaders from some top organizations across North America, you know, and 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 you're you're presenting these projects and and they're just wowed by them, you know, and it really just showed that kind of stuff really gave me a passion for, I guess, you know, the entrepreneurial mindset, regardless of if you're an entrepreneur or if you're in your career, because you can have, you can apply it either way. And, um, and then I just had, that's when I had that passion of, you know, I just love creating. And I just love that, you know, I don't just want things to be handed to me. I don't want to expect to have a diploma or a degree and just expect a job to fall into my lap. I really want to get after it. And, and that mindset really shifted for me. And that's where I think, you know, the business and the marketing side really grew and helped me to, um, to really focus on uh, what I loved and, and then, uh, and then go from there. It seems like you're, a, you're a man with no excuses. <laughs> um, and I say that's because you seem very, very, very busy. You have, you know, you have this job at um, the really good job at credit union that I read about and it seems like you have all these side hustles of, of uh, being, you know, LinkedIn influencer and speaking and being involved, involved in speaking engagements and just building and influencing a community. And I, I, I mean, I don't even want to know how you manage all that time, I, you know, but we can talk about that. But it just seems like I said before, you're a man with no excuses. You love to have you, you, you want to do so many different things. And I'm sure you know this, right? Even from people on LinkedIn, they have full time jobs, but that's all they kind of do. They just have this nine to five gig. But they don't yeah. they don't do anything after that. And this is a very general statement. I mean, everyone's different. But from you know, a lot yeah. of my friends that have nine to five gigs, even, you know, low pay or even high pay, high paying jobs, that's kind of it. You know what I mean? There's nothing else there. And for you, what inspired me to interview you is that you're doing all these things. And I'm like, man, this guy probably has an amazing story. So how do you manage all that time? What do you do? Yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things for me is. I love to be involved in a lot of things because, um, you know, not that I do every little thing under the sun, but by being involved in a lot of different things, you can then um, find out what things you don't like. So, you know, by doing things for, let's say, a year, you can 
um, you can be like, you know what, I don't really like that anymore, or I don't have a passion for that. And then you kind of drop things off and you're, you pick things up that you really enjoy. And, you know, there's been things over the last year that I've dabbled in and I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really love that too much. And then, you know, I tried something else and, you know, there's certain things that, that really you know, pop in and that you enjoy. And one of those was LinkedIn for me. And, um, I think that one of the biggest things for me though, is obviously time management. Uh, I'm not, you know, a time, I don't, uh, call myself a, a, a time management pro or guru or anything, but, um, I try to manage my time as best as I can. I schedule pretty well everything. Um, and you know, I don't waste my time. Like I don't, uh, there's people that, you know, um, that, uh, go to work and, you know, they, they, they get their lunch break and, you know, they just, they, they, and it's great to have that rest period. And, but they, you know, they'll play, you know, Tetris for an hour. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? That's my, that's not my thing. Like I'd rather take that, that rest, that break time and, you know, and build new connections with people and use it as a way to, to, uh, to, to help me, to help provide value in my career, help further things that I have going on and, or provide content and build community. Like those are all things that I think they're, are providing value. And so I try to make sure that all my time that I'm, I'm using, uh, is, is valuable and including even in the mornings, like I'm up early all the time and make sure that, uh, I get, um, as much as I can done in the, even in the mornings before everybody else is up. And so, um, I think that's one, that's one big one, but, uh, but you got to do things that you enjoy. You got to do things that you love because when you do them and you, and you love it, you, it doesn't feel like it's like you're dragging your feet. You yeah. just love doing it. And so I think that's where, when I start picking things up that I really enjoy, and don't get me wrong. I'm not doing speaking every single week. And so it's, you know, there's things here or there that I pick up and, and I make sure that they're scheduled in and, um, and make, and try and make time for them. But, um, that if I enjoy it, like I, I want to try and fit time in as, as best as I can. So yeah, it's a lot of work. I'm a dad. I got two kids too. So, um, but, uh, I think it's knowing what your priorities are, knowing what your values are, and then, um, and then really scheduling the things that you really want to be involved in that are going to add value to other people. And then, uh, provide value in your career or your business or what have you. Time is really the only one of the only things you can't, you know, you can't take back. You know, and yeah. as I get older, I'm learning that more. You know, when we're all young and you're in your 20s, you're just like, oh, you have all the time in the world, and then you're like, wait a minute, uh, no, you don't. <laughs> you really <laughs> yeah. don't. You're like, man, a decade's gone by. It's like, where the heck did it go, man? It's crazy. But um, you got to really utilize your time, and, and that's what I love uh, about what you're doing. And and so in regards to LinkedIn, and, and we all know that you're heavily involved in LinkedIn, uh, and you're reaching it seems to, that you're reaching millions of people. I mean, all your posts are just so much engagement, interaction, and comments, and likes, and and not that I want to get stuck on the metrics, but just in terms of how you're reaching these people. How did your LinkedIn journey start? Was it, I mean, was it years ago? Did you kind of get in early with, with engaging with all these people or was it more recent? Yeah, uh, I can absolutely share that story. I think, uh, I don't even know if I've actually really shared the full journey start to finish in a, a quick way. I'll, I'll try to do as best I can, but um, yeah, I've been on LinkedIn since 2012, but I, I never really used it beyond just an online resume. Like I, I had a presence, I set up a profile um, you know, I did the whole recommendations and top, you know, and put your skills in and got all, all my you know, work experience and education in there. All that stuff was, it was a completely done profile. I've had it done for years. Uh, but I was never, I never really did it as a, a way to build community of, of any sort. I had, I had probably about 800 connections or so, at, uh, you know, in, in, for the better part of, you know, five years. And, um, so from 2012 to well, about 2017 and, uh, in uh what was it november november 2017 is i started seeing posts on on linkedin that um were like very content focused so i saw the same people almost it seemed every single time i opened my phone and you know one of those was <clears throat> was manu goswami and i'm sure you know of oh, swish right he's everybody knows manu goswami on linkedin yeah. and he i saw him every single time i opened my 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 app and i thought there's got to be something more going on here. You know, people are creating content. There's obviously, you know, there's videos now. And so I thought I always enjoyed the, the content on LinkedIn. I enjoyed the the community of it. Very professional. Like it's, you're not going to see, you know, uh, shoes and you're not going to see clothing. It's, it's like very like learning about your career, leadership, market, like all, industry focused. I'm like, I just love that type of content. So I'm like, I think I can provide some good value in terms of, you know, my career learnings, 
Um, I love people like building relationships and, and connecting with great people is one of my favorite things. So I thought, let's, let's just, uh, let's see where this goes. And I really thought, you know, I'm going to start focusing on building community. And, um, and so it all started with looking at my profile and I said, I, number one, I have to establish some credibility. So, I mean, I, uh, I like to tell people is, um, try and establish as much credibility in your profile up front as possible because, um, make if people are visiting your profile, the first thing that's going into their mind is what's in it for me. So they're like, what, wh- what's the benefit of visiting this person's profile? If I connect with them, am I going to get any benefit from it? Yeah. And, and that's what, that's why people visit because they want to help, you know, progress their career. They want to meet great people to help them get ahead. And so that's the reality of it. If you look at the psychology behind it and, so I thought I got to set up a really sharp profile. And so I did, you know, I had, you know, I won a, I won a couple of awards. I um, tried to, to put in there a bunch of credibility uh, building up front so that people would want to start connecting with me and I could meet some great people um, because I hadn't had, I really hadn't established any of that trust with anyone yet. So it was a good small way to, to start building conversations with people. So that was number one. And then I thought I, I can't be all about me. So um, I said, because I, I, there's so many amazing people in this world that have so many great stories to tell. And of course, that's why, you know, you might call it the podcast and, you know, you're talking to some great people because there's just so many amazing stories. So I thought yeah. I, I wanted to start a, 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 a LinkedIn article series called well, The Incredibles. Um, so I thought there's the, the, the people that are changing the face, face of, the pa- up, of the platform, you know, they're making it more, you know, an online resume to a content creation side of things. So I, I, I really just started this series and I did like a, the, the superheroes of LinkedIn, the Incredibles. So, you know, like the actual Incredibles. Oh yeah, I, 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 just, I, 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 I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> so I did that and I tagged a bunch of people and I, you know, I highlighted a whole list of people that are the Incredibles of LinkedIn of who I'd met at the time and seen <laughs> content and, and they just loved it. It was unique. It was different. And wow. I think that's what really, when you, when you can do high quality content that really brings people into it, um, you know, they, they, um, that you start getting discovered. So people are like, oh, this is great. Like, I wonder if I see another article, will I engage more than likely because they, they love the first one. So you start building a lot of that established credibility up, up front. So then I took that article series and I started doing individual people. And, you know, I did Manu Goswami and I, of course, where I did Jay Shetty. And, and then I think that's where, uh, and then lifting other people up in posts that have done, done some great things, tagging them. And, I think that just gets you discovered. So number one is you kind of have to get discovered. And once you get discovered, especially by, you know, other micro influencers and content creators, it, it really does a, a number on your community uh, and credibility. It's, it's really, really powerful. And so I think that's where I started. And, and then uh, I think another big, another big turning point was, you know, I saw Miguel Forbes, um, the founder of Forbes.com. He had just joined LinkedIn and he was on my feed and, um, I had uh, I said I did a, a public you know welcome one of my posts is a public welcome to him I said like hey Miguel welcome to LinkedIn what took you so long here are some of the people that are just crushing it on LinkedIn here's what LinkedIn is like today here's what it used to be uh, and then you know I said we're here for you if you want to if to help grow community and really show you the power of LinkedIn and that post got you know 1.1 million views and just some amazing people, you know, that were responding back to that post. And, um, it really was, it was cool. I got to dis, you know, discover so many amazing content creators and other influencers from that, just that post. And, um, yeah. And then, you know, it just, then I got, then I met, you know, of course at that point I had met Quentin alums and I love Quentin and been connected with him for six months since I really started creating content. And he said, do video, man. Like I only done a couple of videos to them. I, I, you know, done a lot of more written stuff and to do videos, you have an act for, you know, talking to people and you're good in front of the camera. And um, I always had been comfortable doing it. So he's like, just, just jump into more video. This is where LinkedIn's going. Um, yeah, and so, I I, then, so I did. And then uh, I've literally been doing 90% of my contents video since that conversation, probably about three months, three or four months ago now. And um, yeah, I've been, I haven't looked back. So it's all been video now and I've really, really enjoyed it. And uh, it's been cool to, to really grow. I never thought I would have 800 connections and in six months, you know, have, you know, 14,000 just from just from purely building community and just chatting with people and, and building relationships through content. So it's been really cool. And um, and I just am excited to see where the platform continues to go in the next uh, few months to uh, next few years and especially where 
Microsoft's putting a lot of investment in it. It's no, that's they're no slouch of an organization. So we're really going to change it. I truly believe change the platform and, and it's going to be really one to watch. LinkedIn live surprised that's not there yet. <laughs> it's not there. Yet. Not yet, but hopefully, know. hopefully soon. I know we're all looking for it. LinkedIn live. I know you're like, you're laughing because you're like, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I wish it was LinkedIn live. Yep. I was like, where's the live button here? I was, and my, my business partner, he's like, he's like, Mike, uh, there's no LinkedIn live. I'm like, <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> and it, it's so live good. LinkedIn stuff. live. It just has such a good ring to it. <laughs> it does have a good ring. You're like, Microsoft invested. How much money? I mean, well, they bought LinkedIn, but oh, it's crazy. 26, I guess they're 26 they billion. They got oh, 26 wow. billion, which is funny because when you look at the, the investment that LinkedIn, uh, that Microsoft made to LinkedIn at 26 billion and you look at the investment that Microsoft, uh, that Facebook made into into Instagram, it's actually they only bought it for a billion. So it's twenty six wow. times more of an investment that Microsoft bought LinkedIn for, which is crazy. Oh, and I really hope they do not have those limitations like Instagram. The the the, the stupid one minute things I can't take it because <laughs> I like to talk, man. I, I love to talk, and I I don't I never shut the heck up. So I can't do a minute. It's very challenging for a talkative Greek guy. <laughs> Talking of Greek guys, uh, hey, you're talking to Italian, so I'm in the same boat. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's cool, man. I love it. So, at the end of the day, Fabio, most of us want to help and inspire others. And um, can you provide any more? Like, getting into more detail here, so more strategies. Can you provide any thoughts or processes or tips on what worked for you in terms of reaching so many people, connect with connecting with them, and building an online community? You did touch on a few points, but. Did you have like a certain process? Is there uh, certain times that work for you in terms of posting or the the timing of the video yeah. or tagging, things like that? Yeah. So that's great. That's all great insight. Um, so yeah, for sure. I think there's, there's certain pieces of content that work better than others, especially now. Um, I would have had probably a different thing to tell you three or four months ago, but um, right now it's all video. I think, you know, LinkedIn really wants to push video. So just video alone will already get you a little bit more exposure. Um, but I think there's there's a lot of good strategies. People that just that decide not to put any hashtags in your post are losing out. I mean, you have to because LinkedIn's now tagging, taking content that's getting engagement on a specific hashtag. If it's on branding or marketing or entrepreneurship, and they'll, they'll actually attach it to your post. And then um, people search entrepreneurship because you can actually save certain hashtags now and have them in your feed you know, if there's a specific person that only wants to see content on marketing and you post about marketing, that's going to show up in someone's feed who wants to see that. So I think that's where um, you have to put those hashtags in because it exposes you to more communities. Um, and that's so that's a good one. Use hashtags. Don't overuse them. You know, I only put like two or three, maybe four in there. Pops. Um, I do like to tag, um, not like a crazy block tagging. I used to do a little bit of that when I first started because it really, I need, I, I didn't have that discovery of many people. And so that's what, what I did, but um, I didn't just tag people without any call to action. I would actually lift people up and say, here's who you should connect with. Um, but today now I do more of um, from a tagging perspective, you know, if I do a post, it might have two or three people in it that are tagged, you know, that are providing good value that people can connect with. If I'm telling a story about something um, and that's great. Cause you know, those, those people have communities that are maybe similar that starts pushing it out to more connections. And so I think that's, that's also big is, is, is tag people because also when you tag people, including, you know, even in comments back when you tag people and people respond, um, I think the algorithm, what it does is shows that like you are actually generating conversation and you're getting replies back so that you're not just like simply, um, tagging people because if you tag a lot of people and nobody responds back, it's going to hurt you. But if you actually tag a bunch of people, but you get a lot of response back, it shows that your content is relevant and people want to talk about it and comment back uh, and generate conversation. And that's good. Like that's like, that's what they want. So um, that's, that's huge. If you can get people to engage in your content, um, have a respond, have them respond back. Uh, that's big. Um, in terms of video, if you're doing video, uh, I like to tell people is, you know, your, your videos should be under two minutes. Um, I've had probably a couple that are under over two minutes, you know, a few of them, but uh, most of mine are usually between a minute and a minute and a half. Um, reason being is because people these days, their attention spans are so 
thin that like they can't sit there for a five minute video. Um, so, so yeah. two minutes or less is gives them good value, especially if you can give them good value. Um, you know, give them the meat and potatoes of your, of your message. And then also include in your post, don't just do a video, but do a video, but also include the text. Cause some people just like to, to, um, to get the context of your video, what's, what's being said through, through reading. So, cause yeah, everybody consumes content differently. So I think that's where you have to do both. You have to double down and do, you know, a text post, um, with, with a video explaining oh, it. Is that what you're talking about? Speech yeah. To text? Uh, well, like, like you're doing, um, no, like, that's, that's another one, I guess, captions. So you're doing cap captions yeah, yeah. in your video, but actually talking about what's, what your video is in your post. So in the actual the text part of your post um, so that if people don't even want to watch any of your video or your captions, they can just, you know, they can do a quick scroll of what's he talking about in this video and you you get your post outlines at all. You know, you get your start middle, you get your end, you get your call to action. And then it's like, um, yeah. And then that's how they might want to consume content. So I think that's where if you hit everybody with all those angles, that's huge. Uh, And then you touch on it. Captions. Captions is big. Um, People want it. People read their phone. People read, uh, watch videos now on their phones, uh, most of the time in silent. It's funny how, how often people do, because, you know, you, maybe you're, um, you're in a public setting or, um, you're on a breakout work or, you know, people don't want to, you know, click the, the, the volume and have to listen to it. They're like, I'd rather get the content and, and watch what's going on, but still be able to grasp it. And that's where, you know, your captions are huge because I have noticed it myself since I've really started adding captions in pretty well every video. Um, it has, it has increased engagement because, um, you know, even by a couple thousand views, because, you know, people just you like to consume um, just the captions on, and on and watch the video on silent because all they have to do is watch the video for three seconds and three seconds counts as a view. So, you know, if, if you don't have captions and the first three seconds that your mouth's moving and they don't know what's going on, they're passing by and um, they're not getting your content. So if you have captions, they're going to get they're going to stay a little bit longer. And at least if you can catch them in the first 20 seconds with captions they might actually read your captions and be like this is really valuable i'm gonna keep watching so that's big i think uh people um negate putting in captions because it takes time and put take to, to do it um and it's true um but there's some lots of easy ways there's apps you can use you know like uh clips clip matic on on ios there's um there's uh if you if you want to put a little investment in it there's a, a website called rev.com um, and rev.com will do your captions for, uh, uh, $1 a minute. So if your video is two minutes and cost you two minutes, they'll do it all for you. They'll send you the SRT file. Um, and then the other one that you could do is you could go right onto YouTube. So upload it to YouTube and fix all your, it does all auto auto transcribes it. You fix up any, you know, punctuation and that sort of thing, or, you know, capitalize the certain things, which doesn't take long. And then you just download the SRT file and then you can upload it to your MP4 on desktop and LinkedIn, and there you have it. You get captions. It doesn't take very long. So I think that um, YouTube gives you free captions. I mean, so it is free from free YouTube, from, isn't it? It's free from it's YouTube. Not. You just upload your video. And you can edit. You go to English. Click on English or whatever country you're from. And then, uh, yeah, you just simply um, – it auto-transcribes, so it's done all for you. You just simply watch your video and um, make your edits, which is super easy to use. They have it all pretty well done for you there, the platform. And then you just – Go to the top, save your captions, go to download, click SRT, because it's, of course, the only file that LinkedIn will take. And then um, you get your SRT file, save it to your desktop and upload your video on desktop, which could only be an MP4 for LinkedIn to add your captions. There's a little pencil icon. Mm-hmm. You click it and you upload your captions and then away you go. You got you got native captions. Easy peasy. So yeah, so there's there's a couple of things that you know that are work that work really well, like that just get you more exposure on your videos, and that's that's absolutely one of them. And so I think that's big. So you got tagging, you got you got um, hashtags. Um, I'm I, I'm and I'm big on if you're tagging people, try to tag, try to build relationships with um, micro influencers and content creators. The reason I say that is because you know influencer marketing is just a massive industry. It's growing like crazy, and if you can have other people. Um, if you tag, let's say, a, a Manu Goswami or a Jay Shetty and they respond back, you instantly get access to that person's network of people because then it shows on, the, so, you know, on, for example, Jay's feed or Jay's connections feeds says Jay Shetty likes this or Jay Shetty commented on this and it's your post. So that obviously gives you instant credibility to what your message is 
I mean, obviously other people are going to want to see what Jay Shetty liked or commented on. So I think that when you can do that, um, do that well and consistently, you can really start building content that people want to consume and, and you get higher engagement on that. So I think that's, uh, that's another big one is I, I, from the start, it, I, from the start said, I'm going to start building relationships with people that have a, that really have a good, strong message. I have established credibility, whether it's a content creator or, a, you know, an influencer, or a business leader. And I just, I want to leverage the community in that aspect because you can get your message out way easier when you can do that because you have other people who have a larger voice than yours helping you you spread that message, which is huge. And what about the actual timing, uh, the timing of posting? Uh, yeah, timing of posting is a good one too. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about that one. That was uh, So I think that there's a misconception about LinkedIn that – people are looking at content on LinkedIn during their work day. That was like the whole thing where it's like, you know, it's a business platform. It's LinkedIn. They're watching their content. They're, they're doing content and they're on the platform from nine to five. I, I just don't believe it. And, um, and I've, I, the reason I say that is because I've, I've done posts and, and some that haven't performed well at between nine and five. So, you know, I'm like going to post around noon and it just doesn't work. And I'm like, okay, so I tried thinking like if LinkedIn is more of a content creation platform and that's what people are going to now, you know, video and people aren't consuming video during the day, they're probably going to do it more, you know, uh, on the train ride home from work, or they're going to do it, you know, on the cab ride home, or they're going to do it, you know, when they're, they're, you know, at 7 PM when they finish dinner and they're just relaxing on the couch. I thought that sounds more like what I would do. So, and that's when, that's more of when I consume content is, you know, I'm more after in the evening and because I'm not on Facebook or Instagram as much as I am on LinkedIn. So I thought that makes, just makes way more sense. So I started to post, um, I only post really between 5 PM and, um, and, and 9 PM. And that's usually when I, when I post, unless it's a weekend, but during the week it's five to 9 PM and it's been a real good sweet spot for me. I, I usually actually, and it depends what country you're from, but, um, for me, eight eight PM is a great time for me. It just it's been a great optimized peak time for me to post. That uh, I find I get a lot of quick engagement, and if you can get a good engagement on your post within the first hour, that's what triggers the algorithm, right? Like if you can get some good engagement on likes and comments uh, or shares on your post within the first hour, it triggers the algorithm and it pushes your post further to more people. Because what happens when you first post, you um you LinkedIn only releases your content to a specific amount of your first connections. And what it does is it tests it. So it's like, okay, this posts going out to X amount of your connections. Um, if, if we don't, don't get a ton of engagement on it, it's probably not a high quality post. We're not going to push it further. So not many people will see it. And, um, but if you get, uh, if you, if it's a good post and, um, you can catch people at a good time and they release it and it's, you get a lot of good engagement up front too. Um, your t- the LinkedIn algorithm is saying, this is a great post. Let's push it to more people. And that's how you can start generating virality. That's some amazing insight. Thanks for sharing that, Fabio. I, I agree. I, you know, I, I, some of the posts I put, so we have this hashtag. I have this hashtag um, that I created called selfless promotion. I do one per week where I choose somebody and I, I uh, basically promote them. And there was this one I did on, uh, she climbed Everest. Um Nice. Yeah, and she was um, a New York Times bestseller and everything, and she commented on it, and that right there in just five days got like over six or seven thousand views. Yeah, you know it, it's just insane how you can utilize our network and and tag. And I I was really inspired by her story, that's why I shared it. But she said she commented on it, and boom, it just I guess it went up in. Uh, I, I guess the, the algorithm really liked the, the post. So it got tons yeah. of views. I'm, I'm curious to see how many views it has now, but no, that's, that's great. <laughs> and I, I think, I think we really learned from the insight that you just shared. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. So, I mean, if you can, and that's where, I mean, that's where tagging can work, right? Not, uh, blocks of tagging, but yeah. in, in amounts where people will actually respond. Like if you, I like to sit to tell people, if you have a post about, you know, renewable energy, and this is what your your niche is, and that's what your industry is. And you're tagging like like me in it, and you're tagging like you know Gary V and all these people that maybe those people probably may not respond, but like I'm looking at smaller content creators that like talk about marketing and business. They're gonna be like, what What's this post have to do with me? Like I'm not responding to it's this. Purposeful tagging. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be. It's gotta be very yeah purposeful and 
it's got to be meaningful. Like you were, it's got to be something they might be interested in. And uh, that can totally help you, especially within that first hour to give your post a good jump um, and, and get it off to the races to, to, to better views. Do you feel that LinkedIn encourages more quantity in terms of content or more quality with purpose? Sometimes I hear both from different people. Yeah, I, that's, that's, I haven't asked that before. Um, I, I'm more of a quality content creator as opposed to a quantity um but quantity does work so obviously it works really well if your posts are quality and you can post in quantity um you know like oleg vishnapolsky and almost everyone knows him on linkedin he's um yes his content is is he posts very consistently but he posts in more quantity so he yeah, posts probably a few times per day. And there's, I know a few people that post a few times per day, but then there's like other people, like, for example, myself, I'll, I'll post, um, you know, three or four times a week, sometimes, you know, two times a week, but I try and make sure that I spend extra time on what that video is and that message is so that, um, I'm not just throwing out just any piece of content because then there's, you know, people won't resonate with the message. They won't, you want people to feel something when they're, engaging when they're looking at your content, because I think that's, we're triggered by emotions, right? Emotions, emotions and our decision-making are so closely tied, right? That's where, you know, I like to tell, I've told this story before where it's like, you know, if you go through a bad breakup, I'm just gonna use an example. This, you know, this girl goes through a bad breakup and you know, there's like this cliche thing where you go through a bad breakup and you know, you go binge shopping and you, you start eating emotionally eating and you know, you're trigger, you're triggering an, an emotional response in your brain that is making a decision because of your emotions. So the same thing happens if you go to like a conference and you're like, you're just so pumped from the conference. You, you, you're like in that moment, you decide I'm going to make a change in my business or I'm so pumped. Like you, you made a decision and sometimes it doesn't turn out that way. Like you, you keep that decision going, but those emotions affect our decision-making even in that moment. So like if you can watch a video that stirs you or moves you, whether it's, <clears throat> it's humorous, it's, it's sad. It's, it's angry. It's happy. Like those trigger on a response within us to either like comment or share. And I think that's where that can only really come across in quality content. If it's just quantity, you're going to be missing out on the emotional side of things. And people are just going to bypass your post without doing anything and um, without taking an action on it. Yeah. And I, I think Jay Shetty talks about this or was it Gary Vaynerchuk? It was one of those guys, but they were talking about uh, there's this new thing now called you know personal branding. We all know what that is, but it's emotional branding and purposeful branding. And mm -hmm. when you feel something, they say when you feel something in your you know as cliche or Oprah as this sounds, when you feel something in your heart, right? You, you want to express it. That's really the best time to post it because people. I'm talking about a video because people when they see your face, it touches them. And we talked a little about mm -hmm. about this before we started this interview about just getting in, you know, just emotionally uh, engaging with people on, uh, through video and through content in general. And uh, I put something out, I remember last month in regards to when you put out videos or any type of content, don't expect, don't let the metrics that you get back from it dictate how you feel and how impactful or how valuable you are. Because, you know, these platforms, they're really addicting. And, and you know this, right? I'm, a, I mean, I'm addicted to it. I love social media. I'm continuously posting. But I try not to let the numbers, the metrics that, that um, you know, the analytics that I see from the, these posts dictate yeah. my value or my worth. And a lot of people do that. And it can lead to depression. And that's a whole different subject. But you don't want to let that dictate how good or how knowledgeable or valuable you are. It's more about the impact that you have. Because you might have 30 likes, right, on a post. But you might yeah. actually change that per, impact that person's day positively. It might be three or you know a few people. That's really what matters. At least that's that's for me. That's my opinion. That's totally true. Like I, I think that's where you know you'll talk to someone who's really got a, a hold, a good hold of value in their in their niche. Let's say they're talking about, um, you know, let's say they're talking about solar energy, and you know it's something that I wouldn't talk about, but and it's not necessarily the most popular topic, but. Um, you know, someone might be a content creator on that. And it's like, <clears throat> they're someone who talks about, you know, something more inspirational and leadership and more, you know, bigger topics that have, you know, 500 to 1000 likes on a post um, and comments. But, you know, maybe they're not getting any business from it. They're not impacting that many people. People are just commenting and engaging, which is great. 
but there might be people that are in, let's say the one that's posting that, you know, solar, solar power energy. He's, they're going like, I just, they, they're, they're messaging those 30 likes, let's say are messaging that person being like, this was so valuable. Like, and maybe they're buying, like there's, you, you can't look at the numbers purely as, um, as who's, who's providing the most value because someone who's got 30 likes could have, you know, tons of business and tons of impact because they're just in a, a smaller niche or they're just, they're, um, they're providing value in just a different way and a different topic. I think that's, what's huge is we can't look at just all the metrics and the vanity, uh, metrics as, as purely someone who's providing value because, um, there's, you know, you can be in so many different industries and obviously there's things that work more than others, but, um, you know, I like to tell people is sometimes people are like, oh, I didn't get this much engagement on a post. I'm like, so what? Move on. Do another post, like start playing your next post. Don't worry about the last one. Like, it's great. You provide value to a certain X amount of people. That's awesome. And just, you know, just keep going. Um, you don't have to focus on, uh, you know, oh, this post did better than the other and that sort of thing. Just be like, you know what? Cool. Like some people responded and some people did. Obviously some people had some good value and then you move on to the next one. You just keep, keep generating uh, good quality content. So yeah, I'm big on quality. I'll take the extra day or two if I have to, to think of what topic can I, can I uh, talk, talk, talk about and, and do a video on and, and then I'll do it as opposed to just sharing just anything on the platform. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. Although, what. although I will tell people if you're starting out, you don't have anything to say, um, start it's, you know, don't be like, Oh, I don't have any quality to say, or I'm not good on camera. Start posting quantity. And then when you start posting quantity, you'll understand what quality looks like. Um, cause you make it a post. that's like, Oh, that was really good. And you're going to start replicating that. Maybe it's, you know, it's more, I told a story this time and the story got more engagement than, you know, than just talking about facts or, you know what I mean? So like you can start learning by, by doing. And I think as you get going and you, as you know, for them, that's someone that's not created any content before on LinkedIn or any platform, um, that, that's a good way to, to start figuring out, understanding what works and what doesn't. That's great advice. And, and even this jumps into the next question, talking about quantity. Do you think all social platforms, not just LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, do you think all social platforms are getting harder to not be a needle in a haystack in terms of standing out and receiving engagement? Because you, you know this, even though you get tons of views and you're impacting tons of people around the world, do you feel it's very saturated? I, I just wonder sometimes how to get out of that. How do you stand out? And I don't even mean just stand out in terms of the metrics. I mean just standing out in terms of, you know, we talked about this numerous times in this episode is, um, you know, uh, influencing people and touching people and uh, impacting them in a positive way. But where do you feel that's, that's kind of headed? Do you, you think it's just getting harder and harder? It is of course. Right. Like, uh, I mean, I remember the numbers. I saw something about Instagram. Oh, I don't know. A couple weeks ago when they launched IG, a few weeks ago when they launched IGTV and they released some numbers of how Instagram's really grown. And I thought you start an Instagram account, you know, 2000 and, uh, you know, 2012, uh, to now it's so, it was so easy back then because like yeah. it, everything favored you. It wasn't a crowded market, not as everybody was there. And so when people are looking for content, they're looking at your stuff, right? Yours is what shows up now. It's like everybody and their, their brother and their brother's cousin and second cousins all, <laughs> all Instagram created yeah. content. So it's like, yeah, you're, you have to, it's so much harder to break through the noise, especially on big channels like Instagram and Facebook. But you know, LinkedIn, for example, is um, not saturated. You know, I truly believe that, you know, I, I, the reason like people are like, how are you doing what you're doing? Yeah, I'm building community. I love building great people, relationships with people. And, you know, I, I, I like to think I, my content's, you know, resonating with people. But I mean, at the, also at the end of the day, like I'm in, we're, anyone that's creating content right now on LinkedIn is in a very unsaturated platform. Yeah, there's 500 million users. Okay, big deal. But I would say probably about half of them just have an online resume they haven't looked at in two years. Like it's just, they have it. It's just, it's just simply sitting there. They don't do anything. So that already cuts out half the people. You're at 250 million. Okay. And the rest are probably not even, they, they're, they're on it once in a while, maybe liking a few things, but they don't create content. They don't write articles. They don't do videos. They don't do anything. They might share some links and that's it. Okay. So now you're looking at an even smaller amount of people, people that create content. It's, it's probably out of the 250 million. It's probably like, I mean, I've heard this multiple, it's one, probably 1% 1 of people that actually create content. And then out of that 1% that create consistent content, um, it's probably 1% of that 1% that do videos consistently that are using the actual video platform uh, functionality. 
consistently, you know, every week and they're providing their own original content. They're not just sharing stuff. It's, it's so small. Like, I think it's just, you know, when you're creating content, you see all these people engaging and they're also creating content. You have this like mentality. Oh, everybody must be doing it. I just, I just, I think that's not the case right now. I just think it's like, it is that small right now. And obviously LinkedIn wants to grow, um, you know, video and content on their platform because that's not what they're known as. People, there's still misconceptions today. You're creating content on LinkedIn. Isn't LinkedIn like a resume platform? You know how many times I yeah. got that? <laughs> so it's like, it's, like, oh, it's still, it's still like that. Like wow. you know, YouTube, when YouTube started and they're only a year in, people don't even know about YouTube a year in like LinkedIn. It's been around for a while, but video has only been around for under a year. So people don't still don't even know about video. Some, many people have even been on LinkedIn in a year. So they don't even know that video is going on. So I think that's where, you know, you know, two, three years down the road, you're going to start seeing some major effects, um, you know, of people starting really to use video. And obviously they're going to make changes. And I think then you're going to start seeing maybe a little more saturation in a couple of years, two, three, four, five years time, because then you're going to start seeing the same effects that every social media channel goes through. And that's just volume. And I think people just aren't there yet, which is great. So if you're not on LinkedIn, it's probably one of the best channels you can use right now to create content and share a powerful message. Where do you think, Fabio, social media in general is headed? Do you think it's just, I mean, we all know it's growing like crazy, but do you feel there's going to be a a crash on social media? Just, you know, just like they say with an economy, every eight to 10 years is always a crash. Do you think with social media, it's going to, have any type of negative crash or you think it's just going to continuously skyrocket and they're they're all these platforms are just upgrading their systems and algorithms and what are your thoughts on that i do think um social media will continue to grow there are platforms that come and go in waves right you know there's 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 platforms like for example vero i don't know if you've heard of vero but you know, Vero was, no. a, Vero was a platform that was really getting a lot of PR and good uh, buzz as like the next big thing. Um, and then it just crashed. Like, it's just like people are still on it, but it's like, it's just, it's just not, it's just not one that's, uh, that's, that, that really took, took off. And this is a recent one. Another one, obviously you may have heard of Vine, right? Vine, right? Vine was yeah. huge. Yeah. And then it, it just died and no one's using Vine, right? Like there's certain ones that come and go. And I mean, there's ones that stick around and you know, that you know, Facebook and Instagram and, you know, LinkedIn, obviously it's unique because there's no one else in that space. And um, I think, yeah, there's ones that there's certain ones that come and go. But I think from a person's perspective, um, what's interesting is, you know, social media has, has gotten us a little bit away from personal interaction, you know, from a face to face perspective, like we can message people through messaging. And, you know, you can even use video to interact with each other. But, you know, meeting somebody in person is huge. And I think that's where social media has really, you know, um, killed that a little bit and people are like you know i'd rather just be on my phone and looking down at their phones all the time and they don't really crave that you know that that personal connection but we were made for that like that's who we are as human beings and so i think now we're starting to see a shift where people are like you know what i i now crave that human connection you know even face to face which is amazing because what i'm seeing a lot on linkedin is people creating content and then i don't know how many calls i've jumped on that like I, I met people or met people face to face at like events you know, in my city or if I've, uh, you know, gone to Toronto you know, and I, I met so many amazing people in Toronto just from like content creators that are like, oh, I saw your video and I'm like, you've seen your videos or I've, I've engaged on their content. And it's just so refreshing to meet these people in person. I'm like, this is what it's all about. Like, this is awesome. And um, I think that's where social media, as much as it, you know, gets us away from the, the personal side of things, there's a, a way to con- to use social media to connect with people, but then take that offline and, and build those real relationships in real life. And I think that's where the money is. That's where, that's where like the, the power is. And I think that's uh, what, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge way that social media can, can, we can benefit from, from, from social media. So I think we're getting away from, you know, that more of that, um, staying online and I could just look down at my phone and that's all we do is, and we, we don't, we don't let people in. I think that's where people are starting to be like, you know what? No, nah, I, I think things are changing a bit. I'd rather create more of that personal side of things. I've lost it the last two, three, four years because I've been staring at my phone for so long. And, um, I think that's where social media hopefully can, can bridge a little bit of that gap because you need to have a good blend. You don't want people just simply on their phones and never interacting. Yeah. Like that's not healthy. So, especially the up and next up and coming generation, right? Where that's a lot of times is all they know. So um, I think that there's, there's pros and cons to it, of course. Um, but, you know, for, for example, for business and for your career, 
there is no better one, the, one of the there's no better thing you can do than you start creating content i believe and and sharing your personal brand everybody has a personal brand like you are your personal brand like i heard this quote once your your personal brand is what people say about you when you leave the room like what do people feel what are people t- you know telling other people about you like you have a conversation with a group of people you leave the room they're like oh that was so so refreshing oh he's awesome or she's so great like She's just so you know, uh, positive and you know, what are people talking about you? Like everybody has a message or a brand about who you are. And I think, you know, when you, when you can create a personal brand, for example, using social media and whatever channel that is, it just helps you along, give you so many opportunities either in your business or your career that that's where it can also be such a huge benefit that I think a lot of people just miss out on. Yeah. It, it's, it's pretty crazy how, you know, the, the recent years, we have lost a lot of connection, personal connection. And I've been thinking a lot about that, too, even just with myself. I'm like, you know, man, I need to be more. In, uh, I need that more personal experience with people. And I just use social media as more of a tool, mm-hmm. that opportunity. It's like a channel for me to sit down with somebody else, you know, and and actually talk to them. And I, I think there's a lot of um, Fabio. I think there's a lot of companies probably I, I think it was Microsoft or was it? I think it was Microsoft, actually. Don't quote me on that. It's one of these big companies that they're working on creating, like, augmented social experiences. So, you know, like, augmented reality is different and virtual reality. So it's allowing – I think they're gonna, a lot of these big companies are going to be working on platforms, probably in addition to LinkedIn or maybe even new social platforms where they're um, increasing the personal connection, not just me and you here on this audio podcast, but where I can actually see you um and connecting you know what i mean in like a real-time chat on linkedin and we can actually talk (laughs) there uh and see each other and it's more of like an augmented experience i I think these companies they're very smart they have huge marketing teams and and they get all this data and analytics and um they i think they see the future that personal is never going to go away at least i hope not. i hope to god it never Mm -hmm. goes away but what you touched on was perfect i I can completely resonate with that because uh, I mean, we never want to lose that. Never want to. Never want to. It's, it's huge. It's who we are as human beings. And if social media can help, you know, bring more of that into our lives. Then it's then it's such a positive Absolutely. thing. And, and uh, you know, Fabio, I know you speak a lot. Uh, you know, you have uh, speaking engagements. You talk a lot about leadership and building community. Do you have any tips for future and current business leaders on how to essentially be a leader in your experience? Yeah, I uh, I mean, I like to tell a lot of times to students, you know, I talk to students and young professionals a lot. Um, and my main message to them is you have to go out and create, like you have to be an agent of change, no matter what you do in your career, in your business, like you have to go and step out because no one else is going to do that. And um, so like, for example, to students, I just, I want, I really try and tell them, don't expect like a job to fall into your lap. You really have to earn it. Like you have to go out and um and do things that nobody else are will- nobody else is willing to do and so and then in your career as like a young professional if you want to make it to that next level you want to continue growing in your career like what are you doing to make that happen are you investing in your own per- professional de- personal development like are you are you spending time creating new projects and saying are you treating it as treat your treat your job if you have a job as if you're an entrepreneur and say listen like um i want to have an impact here and, you know, every day people leave their, either their, the comfort of their bed, they leave, they leave their um, families at home, you know, they leave kids, they, they obviously, every, most people would love, would love to stay home and spend some more time with their family. And, but you know what, like, if, if you're going to go away somewhere, like, like a, a business or a, a, in your career, you want to, everybody wants to have impact and they want to drive change and feel like they're contributing to something bigger than them than just a nine to five. Um, so I think that's where you, if, if it's not happening, like, why don't you go and create that? So helping, you know, build that culture, build that strategy. You know, if you, if there's something in the organization that's lacking and there's a need that's not being fulfilled, what can you do to fill that need? And so I think that's where it's like, go put a business case together, go, go create that thing. And that's for a lot of times for young professionals. And so, uh, and the other thing for me is when I talk about leadership is how to be a good leader. It's, you know, being genuine and authentic. And I mean, there's, there's a great um, Harvard business review article that, and it's also based off of 
the book Good to Great by Jim Collins, you know, there's two real big qualities in, in leaders. And that's not the ones that are like, you know, the typical boss and the ones that the leaders that tell you to go and do. It's the leader that says, let's go do this together. It's there's two qualities. It's it's humility and fierce resolve. And so I think those two qualities just really can they did you know research in the Harvard Business Review and good to great that some of the best organizations in the world, the biggest organizations that are you know, having massive impact, who are their leaders and what level of leadership are they at? And they looked at five levels and level five was, you know, they had this leader particularly had um, two qualities and it was humility and fierce resolve to succeed and, 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 and drive change. And so, but they did it with humility and saying like, no, it's not me. It's my team. It's, it's all of us doing this together. And, you know, we're forging a path that nobody else is, is going on. And, um, you know, I give credit to everybody else. And they're the ones that, you know, when, when, when uh, times go, times are tough and, um, you know, there's someone to blame. They say, no, 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 I'm not blaming my team. It's my fault. Like those are the leaders that you want to work for. Those are the leaders you work for blood, sweat and tears with. And so I think it's just getting an understanding of, um, if, if that's not something that you're doing on a personal, you know, personal basis, day to day, providing that type of experience to your team, um, or, you know, in your own career, however, my message is, is you need to foster that. And so I think that's just one of my most, the powerful messages I like to share is, is just waking people up, people up to some of those realities, um, as much as I can. Well, thanks for sharing that Fabio. That's, uh, some great insight, man. I think a lot of these younger, um, aspiring entrepreneurs and, and future leaders can really learn from that. And it's very important to become a leader. And I loved how you touched on humility. Mm -hmm. I think that's underlooked and undervalued. And um, yeah, I think it's very important to just be compassionate and be humble. Um, so just to kind of close things out, I always ask the three hows. So how do you define failure? How do you define entrepreneurship? And how do you define success? Okay. Well, um, how do I define failure? Well, I think failure is, um, I think failure is necessary. I think that's where I, I define it as, you know, people, people always see, you know, successful people and people that have achieved some sort of level of success and success is different to other, to so many different people. But, um, and they think that like, they only see the start they like, Oh, where do they start from? And you always hear the story of like where they are now. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times you don't see what happens in between. And I think there's, you know, people go through rough patches in their life. People go through ups and downs. I think that's where that failure is necessary to help us grow as individuals. And I think, um, if it's not necessary, if you see it as a bad thing, um, you know, it's going to hinder you in your career or your business because you know, you're not looking at it from the right perspective. And so I think that's just, um, from a failure perspective, it's necessary. And then uh, entrepreneurship. Um, so the how, I would say, how do I look at it? Um, I, I look at it as is entrepreneurship is really is like a, one of the best qualities you can have. And even if you are, if you are an employee, like you have a job, and there's a concept of entrepreneurship, right? Like yes. entrep being entrepreneurial. And that's like, if you have a passion for creating creating something out of nothing and you love to stand back, you know, in a year's time, it's a year project. You look back and be like, look what I did in a year. Like, look what I, look where it started as just an idea and I implemented it and I did something about it. Look, it's thriving. People are having value from it. Customers are buying or like, you know, employees are loving this, um, you know, this program I did, like whatever it is, have an entrepreneurial approach to it. Um, because, when you have that perspective, you can really be excited about creating things. And it really does. It's one of the most powerful mindsets you can have, um, regardless of what you do in your career or your business, of course. So um, having the entrepreneurial mindset, I believe, is 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 one of the top qualities you can have in your career. Um, and so that's how I look at it. I mean, I, I've seen it because it's, it's been one of the things that I've really focused on in my life. So um, and seen some great benefit from both from a learning perspective and from a failure perspective. But then and then the last one, success. Um, you know what? Success is always an interesting one. I think that um, success is defined sometimes the wrong way for a lot of people. They see money and they think money is success. Um, you know, I, I think that that's the wrong perspective. I think, you know, that's a certain aspect of you know financial success from, let's say, business or something. But, you know, success to some to one person could mean like, I just want to have a family that is I want to put be present with my kids and in their, my kids' lives or my family's life. And, and then I want them to, I want to leave a legacy that, you know, when I die, they're at my funeral, not talking about money, 
but they're being like this, you know, Fabio or Michael, the way this person carried themselves throughout their whole life had such an impact on people. Um, you know, they loved passionately. They provide so much value to people. They lifted other people up when they were down. I was the per- they was the person that they who he went to every single time. I went to every single time when I needed help, and they're always willing to serve. Like that, that's what you want to be known for. And I think that's where there's that's that's a level of success that people you don't see in the media and you don't see in you know these success stories. And I think that's it can be so many things to other people: a present dad or a present mom who giving it their all. They're doing their best they can as a parent. You know, it could be it could be that financial success as a business owner, and then you know it could be. You know, there's so many, there's just so many different uh, ways to define success that I think it's, it's, it's very personal. So, you know, how do I see success is success is very personal. Um, figure out what purpose your, what your purpose is and what you're, you're passionate about um, and what you, what your ultimate goal is. Like, what do you want to achieve? And if you can achieve that goal, whatever it may be, a better parent, better husband, better father, better mom, better business owner, better, um, you know, entrepreneur, um, you know, better dog walker, I don't care, whatever it is. And, you know, you see success in that, whatever that end goal is, find ways to achieve the result. And when you can, I think that's your level of success. That's fantastic, man. I love the personal touch to uh, success. I don't think I've heard that one before. I always ask those three questions because every single person I have on this podcast says uh, either something very, very similar um, or it's completely different. And I just love hearing it. Uh, but th- that's great. Thank you so much again for sharing that. So, uh, Fabio, where can everyone find you, man? Well, of course, um, uh, my favorite channel is LinkedIn. So if you want to, uh, search me up on LinkedIn and just, you know, send me a personalized invite. So I know you listen to the podcast and cause I have 2,300 people sitting in my queue right now and you know, I have to go through them, but I don't, I, it's tough. I, I usually respond to people that, that send personalized invites because there, there's a specific reason they're reaching out. So that's a big one. Um, and then also on Twitter and on Instagram, both at Fabio Morama. Perfect. Fabio, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast and sharing your story with us and insight and knowledge. Uh, I'm very thankful and uh, I really appreciate it. I hope to, hope to stay in touch and I'll let you know when this launches, man. We're really excited. This is going to be really good. Thank you. Absolutely, Michael. I appreciate you taking the time and, and the invite. It was a blast just chatting through some of the you know, things on LinkedIn and leadership and um De- definitely one of my favorite podcasts I've been on. So I really appreciate that, man. Oh, buddy. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Pleasure is all mine, man. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for listening. And this is your host, Michael Giorgio on Tales from the Pros. And until next time. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot for watching Tales from the Pros. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and also follow our social media. Uh, there are links somewhere around here. But uh, we really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for all the support. And I'm going to be giving you awesome content continuously. And we look forward to seeing you soon.